Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Andrew Missick. I'm running for Texas State Legislature, HD 18. I live in Shepherd, Texas, and I pastor a church, King of Saints Tabernacle, here in Cleveland, Texas. And you may ask me, it's like, well, why are you trying to run for state, Texas State Legislature? Well, I believe that we need to have a Republican representing this red district. We need a Republican representing a Republican district in Austin. We don't have it right now. Right now, uh, we have Ernest Bales, who is a liberal. Uh, he's a rhino. Actually, he's a Democrat who's running on the Republican ticket. And uh, so he goes to Austin, and he subverts and obstructs and sabotages the Republican agenda, and he advances the agenda of the Democrat Party. He's been doing this since he first took office. When he originally ran for Texas State Legislature, he put this big sign up, conservative Republican. So he campaigns as a conservative Republican. It doesn't mean what you think it means. He clarifies he's, he's not a social conservative. He's not conservative in the traditional sense. He's a fiscal conservative. That doesn't impress me too much because you have a lot of leftists and liberals and woke people who are fiscal conservative. Uh, but that's what he runs as, as a conservative Republican. He runs as a conservative Republican. But he legislates in Austin as a liberal de Democrat, and he allies himself in Austin with the Democrats. And there are Democrats who vote more conservative than Ernest Bales does, a person who claims to be a Republican. Let me give you an example of, of some of the things that he did. So he runs as a conservative Republican. He also ran as pro-life. I've been a pro-life activist. I've been in the front lines. I've been standing outside of abortion clinics uh, appealing to women to not to take the life of their baby. Abortion is always the wrong choice. No exceptions. And uh, that's my position. I've been preaching against abortion, doing sidewalk counseling. Uh, so Bales, Bales campaigns as pro-life. <laughs> but in his first term of office, he was supporting pro-abortion legislation. And uh, he was exposed by Texas Right to Life. It was all documented. So then he attempted to go into the, the legislative record. And he has the right to do this, but uh, uh, legally. So he went and he censored, erased all of his pro-abortion advocacy. He covered it up. But before he was able to erase it, uh, it was already exposed. So that really disturbs me that you, you have a man who campaigns, oh, I'm pro-life, I'm against abortion. And yet when he gets into often, office, he often advocates for abortion. So we need to hold this man accountable for what he did. I also want to mention that uh, I am the MAGA candidate. I love President Donald J. Trump. I've actually seen Trump in person four times. Ernest Bells is against the Make America Great Again movement. He's against Donald Trump. He's a never-Trumper. He opposes everything that Donald Trump stands for. But I stand with our president. And I believe that President Donald J. Trump won the election in 2020. And I stood up and I fought for election integrity where it really mattered. So I support the Make America Great Again movement. And I'm the MAGA candidate. And eventually, I'm going to confront Ernest Bales at a campaign event or a debate or one of these meet the candidate events and I'm going to have this hat with me and I'm going to challenge him to put this on his head, his head for a photograph. He won't do it. It's going to be like holding up a cross to Count Dracula. He's going to go, <laughs> he's going to pull back. Why? Well, because uh, Ernest Bales is supported by Democrats. Ernest Bales' constituency that he acknowledges, his real constituency, is the Democrat Party and Democrat special interest groups and lobby groups, such as the educational establishment and the teachers' unions. Those are who he answers to. And uh, he would never, his real supporters are the, the left-wing CRT teachers' unions. And he will never stand up for President Donald J. Trump and the Make, American, uh, Make America Great uh, Again movement because those are the people he answers to left-wing, progressive, CRT, anti-American teachers' unions. So let's talk about the teachers' unions right now, now that we know where Ernest Bell stands. He will never stand with President Trump. He won't put this hat on. Like I said, I'm gonna, he'll probably run out of the room as fast as he can. Once I pull the hat out, he's going to run off because he won't be caught dead supporting President Trump in any way because he's held accountable 
uh, he's accountable to the Democrats, the leftists, the progressives, the socialists. Those are who he supports. Those are who he answers to, the liberal anti-America teachers unions. So let's talk about schools. And we can see its symptoms. We can see symptoms of it here in, in uh, Shepherd. We're only 27% of our students can do math at grade level. They need help. They need desperate help. We need immediate action to help our students achieve. We need to open new doors of opportunity for our young people to excel. But Ernest Bales closes those doors. He slams them in the face of our students. I was at Governor Abbott's inauguration. And one of Governor Abbott's legislative priorities was to have school choice. What does this mean? That means every student, every parent has the opportunity to send their student, their child, to a school of their choice. If they choose to, and most people will elect to, then go to the public schools. But you have the option of making sure that your child is inculcated with a Christian worldview, with spiritual and biblical ethics and mores in a Christian school of your choosing, or a private school, or you can use that those money, that those, those funds, those monies for homeschooling. We need action right now. Some people say, well, theoretically, what if the government mandates leftism? Well, they are mandating leftism in public school. This is a way of ex an escape. This is a way to challenge the power of the CRT Marxist. And uh, I worked in education, and I have to say, one day I was teaching a class. There's this young woman, and uh, she was exceptionally intelligent. Wow. Wow, this little girl's far more intelligent than anyone in this class. She's gifted. But then I was thinking about the school that, that she was doomed to attend, where the climate there is hostile to learning. And it's very sad to see that, that little girl potentially being trapped in a failing school. Ernest Bales would rather see your young people, your children, your students trapped in failing schools rather than having options or the, the, the ability to, to what we really need to do is break the power of critical race theory, break the power of political indoctrination, liberal, leftist political indoctrination, not only in our colleges and universities, it shouldn't even be there, but now it's in our public schools. And we need to liberate our young people from this and, and open up new doors and opportunity for success. Innovations, school choice, we need it. Ernest Bell sabotaged our, our governor, Governor Abbott's attempts to have school choice condemning our schools to failure, our students closing doors of opportunity, condemning our students to failure, condemning them to lack of opportunity, condemning them to failure to achieve their fullest potential. We have to stand up against Ernest Bales and stand up for our kids and stand up for them against the teachers unions. Teachers unions which are so politicized, they don't have the best interests of our kids at heart. We need to have the best interests of our kids at heart. And one way to do that is to give them options and choices. And that's why I support school choice. You know, it shouldn't be hard as a Republican representative to vote with your party. But that's something very difficult for Ernest Bales to do. Some people say, well, what kind of leadership skills do you have, Dr. Missick? Well, I served in the military for 30 years. And I've gained, I believe, by my experience, certain leadership capabilities. And I have to also say that in Iraq, we ran our military installation as a city. And I served in city council for a year in Iraq while we were taking direct and indirect fire. So I have experience in city governance. And uh, what kind of experience does Ernest Bales have? Well, he has a lot of experience in selling our, our district out to lobbyists. He has a lot of experience in opposing school choice. He has a lot of experience in working with the Democrats against the Republican agenda. He has a lot of experience, uh, he has a lot of experience supporting pro-abortion legislation. So uh, I guess he has certain leadership skills. And uh, where did he come from? Uh, so what kind of special skills or leadership abilities of Ernest Bales have? I, I think very few. Uh, like I said, in, in, unless you're looking at, I mean, he's very, very effective. Uh, he's very effective in turning our district into a sanctuary district for illegal aliens and creating a safe haven for the Mexican drug cartels to set up shop. And what do the drug cartels do? Well, they do human trafficking. They do illegal weapons tra trafficking. They do drug trafficking. They do child and, and sex trafficking as well. And now all those things are happening in our, 
in our county, San Jacinto Liberty County, and uh, in our district. So these uh, safe havens, uh, these little enclaves of cartel activity uh, that he's created, working with uh, the, the Harris family, are expected to grow exponentially. And uh, soon these little Bells towns, if that's what you want to call them, are going to take over our entire house district. Uh, unless we get some leadership in there who's concerned about the people, the people of HD 18, our counties, and not in, as Ernest Bales puts it, demographic change. He's open borders, Bales. He supports an open border. And not only that, he's, we talk about sanctuary cities. He's changed our district into a sanctuary district. And if that's bad enough, now people are being killed. We have cartel activities. It's not staying in that community. It's spilling out already. And uh, I arrived at my church late at night. And then I find out that there's a killer, a man that is killing little boys, trying to kill babies, killing women, running around. He could be on my church property hiding. Could kill me. This is a consequence of the reckless and dangerous leadership, if that's what you want to call it, of Ernest Bales. So we need to address serious situations in our state, in our community. Now, with Terrenos, what's the solution? Well, I'll tell you one solution is, and uh, Ernest Bales is never going to address this, this problem because he was instrumental. I know for a fact he's instrumental in creating this problem because I was there when he's talking about, yes, I'm in Austin. I'm going to protect Torinos over there. Don't, don't be afraid. I got this under control. Everything that's going on there is going on with my knowledge and consent. I'm protecting it from Austin. I heard him say that myself. I was in a meeting where he said that. So this is a man who's not going to address the harm that's coming to our community from cartel activity. Uh, through this environment, a safe haven that he helped create. But I'm telling you, if I'm a state legislature, I'm not going to stand for cartel activity in my county. I'm not going to tolerate cartel activity in my county or in my house district. It's not going to happen. Whatever we're going to have to do to shut it down, we're going to shut it down. Also, in that area, there's environmental damage. Uh, he's exploiting these illegal aliens. I'm against illegal immigration. I support enforcing the law. But these are human beings, and they're being exploited, and we can't have that. I was visiting, the, you know, I was doing campaign work, and uh, it's true. The drainage in that, that area is awful. I slid off the road because there's water all over the place, right in the, mo the mud, and I sank down deep. It took two vehicles, two big trucks to pull me by the locals. Some really nice people helped pull me out of the mud because Bales doesn't care about uh, our safety, doesn't care about security, doesn't care about the environment, doesn't care about drainage or how people live. Uh, as he said, as Bales has said, his interest in Austin is to prostitute himself to the special interest groups uh, and the lobbies. We need somebody that's going to go in to Austin as a servant of the people, not somebody who's into self-aggrandizing or trying to benefit himself in some way, but looking out for the good of our community and putting safeguards to protect us and our welfare. That's what a legislature is supposed to do, to represent us and uh, work for the benefit of our community and not be self-serving and trying to line his own pockets. So it's time for change. Look, everything I talked about, these are very important issues. But one of the things we need to do is realize that that the problems we're facing in this country are fundamentally, they're spiritual in nature. We need a revival. We need spiritual awakening. We need to do as the scripture says. God spoke to King Solomon and said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal the land. We're hurting nation. We're nation decline. Our community has problems that aren't even being addressed. You see it, homelessness, drug addiction. Drug overdoses. We have an open border. 100,000 American young people die through fentanyl poisoning. Bales looks the other way. He doesn't care about people dying by the hundreds of thousands. I care. And we need to address these, these problems. But fundamentally, these problems are spiritual in nature. These left-wing Democrat Marxists represented by these teacher unions that 
Baal supports. They're trying to destroy our country with CRT. Say that America is an evil country, wicked from its founding. They don't believe in our Constitution. They don't believe in our Bill of Rights. They don't believe in freedom. They believe in creating globalism, government control, stripping our freedoms away. That's what Ernest Bells supports, including our right to bear arms, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. I support America. I support Constitution. I support the American way of life. I support Texas values, and I want to keep Texas strong. So I ask that you support me on this campaign, but I also want to ask that you join me in prayer for this nation. I believe Christ is the answer, and I believe that we need to spend time in prayer. I believe that we need to come together and spend time in prayer for these problems which beset our nation. So I want to ask that you come and join me, support my campaign, and come and join us at King of Saints every night at 7 p.m. while we pray for our country. And I believe that if we pray that God will hear and answer prayers and we're going to see great victories and we're going to see a national spiritual renewing uh, of this country. These teachers unions, they poison the minds of our young people against this great country. But I believe in the United States of America. I believe that what this country represents and I believe that America should be like, the, like Jesus talked about, the shining city on the hill. And the Statue of Liberty is actually, it's, it's not the Statue of Immigration, it's the Statue of Liberty. And it's, it's actually entitled, Liberty Enlightens the World. That's what America represents, that torch of liberty that's shown by our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, our Declaration of Independence, those ideals, those ideals that all men are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. These rights which are enunciated and enumerated in our Bill of Rights, they're liberating, they're empowering. That's why I believe in conservatism. Conservatism empowers everybody of every walk of life, every nationality, every race. It helps us to succeed. What does Marxism do? Everywhere you, that anything that touches or goes with Marxism, we see it happening in our country right now. Marxism causes decline. America and Christianity is about liberty and opportunity. You know, the left actually wants to snuff that light out. But we have to keep it lit. And what did Jesus say? Let your light shine among all men. So let me see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So let's hold up the light of liberty for the benefit of everyone. So please vote for me. Let's get bells out of there. And let's get a strong conservative vote. I'm going to conclude with this. You look at Bales and what he does. It's like, what's so hard? What's so hard about voting with your party in Austin? That's your job. You can't do that. He goes to Austin as a Republican. He, he throws his lot in, his support in with the Democrat Party. Why is it so difficult? It shouldn't be. You should vote with your party if you believe in what your party represents. Now, I would, I'll be a consistent, convinced, reliable conservative Republican vote, unless they do something crazy like, oh, let's, let's impeach Ken Paxton. It's like, are you crazy? Are you kidding me? This man's been effectively fighting against the disastrous and destructive Biden administration policies. We don't need to take our fighters out of the fight in the midst of the battle. That's insane. But that's what Ernest Bales did. Because, and that shows his true colors. We need to get Ernest Bales out of there and get someone in there who really believes in the Republican Party and conservatives in this country and is willing to take a stand for it and fight for our values, Texan values, in Austin. Someone that will stand on Texan values and be Texas strong.